Hey everyone, this is Jace with another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Man, it has been a while since I recorded anything. I was uh, checking through the files here, and the last thing that I did a voiceover for was the Materia Guardian fight during the Rebirth crossover, so whew, it's been a minute. Uh, for any astute observers, you might notice that my red crystal amount has changed. Yes, I've gone from a $3 account to a $5 account. I spent the $2 to get that gear voucher to pick up Barrett's uh, gear, only for them to announce a Barrett banner like two days later. So you're welcome, everybody. Um, <laughs> I also spent my crystals, so my account is uh, is a lot stronger. But anyway, that's enough extra info. We are here to do a, a review of my run for the Mithra Mine Dungeon Ranking event. You can see that I'm at rank five, which I was definitely not expecting, but we'll get into all that good stuff in just a moment. Uh, first things first, let's go over the enemies in the dungeon. So this blue dragon, we're not fighting it, so don't even think about it. So Hagen Prince, uh, he's going to die very, very quickly. We're going to kill him before he can get jump off. Next boss we're going to fight is Gally B, aka Stamp, aka Genopods. Uh, he's going to go down pretty quickly. I'll talk about his mechanics, of course. The two bombs that are next to him are going to die immediately. Next boss we're going to fight is these three soldiers. Uh, they're going to die also pretty quickly before they can do pretty much anything. I'm telling you, my team's really strong. <laughs> I pulled for Zack, uh, his Limit Break banner, and it's 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 wild. Anyway, that's the next boss we're going to fight. After that, we're going to fight uh, Gally B. Akana, uh, and we're going to kill him before Electrocute goes off. And then we're going to fight Shiva, and these ads here, the Levercons, aren't going to do pretty much anything. They're going to get one attack off, and that's that. So anyway, if you haven't seen the enemies yet, those are the enemies that we're going to be fighting. Now let's actually get into my team. Alright, so we're going to be bringing a team of Sephiroth, Zack, and Matt. Let's jump into their gear. Sephiroth is rocking the Kuja's attire from the FF9 crossover event. Edge Wings at OB8, level 100. And then I have Prototype Crimson Blade at OB4. He's going to be helping out with some AoE fire damage. He's rocking... Crimson Flare at level 4. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that fight, I have just a clear video of it on my channel. I haven't done a guide for it, but if people are interested in the guide for it, let me know in the comments. And if enough people are looking for it, then I'll make the guide for it. The Materia, these are mostly just stat sticks. This uh, Ruin Blow has some good magic attack on it. This Fyra is going to be one of the main ways that Sephiroth deals damage, specifically single target. And then this Quakera is just a stat stick. I have some good magic attack on it. For his sub weapons, I have Power Soul, level 100, OB7. We have OB10, Shinra Blade Model 1, at level 110. And then the uh, free Christmas event or holiday event weapon for Cloud. Here are Sephiroth's stats, almost 5k magic attack. Uh, you will see why <laughs> in just a moment. Uh, but here are his R abilities if you would like to see them. You might notice uh, the party. <laughs> magic attack boosts. We'll get into that in just a moment. Next up is Zack. Like I said, I pull on his uh, Limit Break banner, so we're rocking his Fire Arcanum outfit. I got his Stream Guard weapon up to OB7. I was pretty lucky when I did those pulls. Uh, level 110, and I have his Crystal Sword at OB5. So close to OB6, but not quite. And he's rocking Hellfire for his summon for obvious reasons. Uh, this Blazara is just a stat stick, got some good magic attack on it. This Aurora, another stat stick, very good magic attack on this one. And then another stat stick here, uh, magic attack. Sub weapons, we have Sun Umbrella at OB8, level 90. We have Matt's Absolute Royal, OB5, level 80. And then we have Mithril Type 0 Katana, OB7, level 90. Here are Zach's stats. Not quite as much HP as Sephiroth, but that's fine. Still sitting at 4,329 magic attack. And here are Zach's R abilities. Magic attack isn't even maxed out, but that's fine. We're at level 5, boost fire potency. And again, we have the magic attack all going on. Last but not least, we have our boy Matt. And of course, his killer attire, because now he's the only character left who's only gotten one outfit. So, uh, Applebot, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Anyway, uh, main handing prime number. I've gotten this to OB6, still level 80. And then I've gotten Stingray to OB6 as well. For those who aren't familiar, this is his magic defense down weapon. So one button press, three tiers of magic defense down with Matt. 
For his limit break, we're rocking the new one, Vanquishing X. This removes all physical attack up and magic attack up buffs from an enemy. Uh, you'll probably see where that's going if you know what's coming in the dungeon. For his materia, we have some more stat sticks. Uh, magic attack up is what I'm looking for with that one. We have a Fyra. This is the one that you actually get from the hard version of the dungeon raking event. So if you didn't get that, uh, tucked away in the top right is a little Cactuar. Go fight it. It'll drop a four-star Fyra materia. And I ended up with pretty good substats on it. So definitely worth it. And then I'm rocking a Fire Breach because for prime number, the last support materia slot is a buff debuff extension. And it's a Fire Dungeon, so Fire Breach. Uh, for sub weapons, we have four point shuriken level 80 at ob5 we have protector's blade also another limit break weapon uh sephiroth specifically at ob3 level 80 and then we have bramble spine for a little bit of extra healing and some magic defense you can see math's stats right here but here are his r abilities if you are interested in seeing them so yeah, this is a pretty uh, pretty stacked team. I did not expect to <laughs> be able to reach 300,000 CP, but you know, this is a competitive event, so I'm not pulling my punches. All right, let's get into the run. All right, first things first, we're gonna go fight the Sahagan Prince because that's the only option that we have. Now I'm gonna be doing a lot of jumping around at the camera. This is deliberate. I'm jumping from character to character to make sure they either use or don't use abilities. So starting off with lowering his magic defense with Matt, I made sure that Sephiroth didn't do anything until that was there. Two fire us from Sephiroth, two igniting streams from Zack, and he's dead before he can get jump off. 68,000 points after an 18 second fight. And for the trance ability, we are of course taking the full score boost. I have a very strong team, so may as well go as hard as we can. I'm going to pick up these items and we're going to go straight into the Galley B fight. As always, when you're fighting Galley B, aka Stamp, aka Genome Pods, you want to switch to Defensive Stance immediately at the start of the fight because he's going to charge you. Now with my team here, Sephiroth's AoE is going to kill the adds. I'm going to heal up with Matt and lower the boss's magic defense. And then we're just going to kill him. Igniting Stream from Zack hits really hard. I'm going to do it a couple times here. I'm going to pull some ATP on Matt. You'll see why in a moment, but Galley B is down. 68,000 points after a 28 second fight, and for the trance ability, we're going to take the magic defense and healing potency. It's going to be super helpful for the Shiva fight. We're going to take an upward path to this next fight so we don't get a random encounter. Matt is going to lower each enemy's magic defense one at a time. That's why we pulled ATP on him. Our other two characters are going to be using AoE abilities, and we're going to take down these enemies actually very, very quickly. And for this last enemy, Zack's going to use Igniting Stream here, and Pop goes the Weasel. That's the end of the fight. 68,000 points again, 28 second fight again, and for the Trance abilities, we're going to be taking the Ice Resist and Fog Resist. It's just... Those abilities are too good for the Shiva fight. It actually trivializes it, in my opinion. Uh, for this random encounter here, uh, the main goal that we have is to make sure that Zack and Sephiroth's summons are maxed out and that we can heal up at the end of the fight. So I do a little bit of defensive stance shenanigans just to you know waste them ATB and charge up the gauge. We make sure that Matt heals up at the end. That's the end of that random encounter. We're going to use a fire cocktail on Zack before we go into the next fight. And now we're going to go fight Galley B Akana. Now, just like the regular Galley B fight, you want to switch to defensive stance at the beginning. You have a little bit more time in this version, uh, but you still need to switch pretty early. Did you know that if you time things exactly so, you can actually queue up an ability to go off automatically after a boss uses an ability? That's what I did there with Matt's heal. Uh, now we're going to use our summons as soon as the attack gauge hits full again, and just before the boss can start charging up its next ability. Uh, the ability that's charging up is Electrocute, it's an AoE magic defense, or excuse me, magic attack, and hits pretty hard, and afterward it goes straight into a sigil phase. We didn't bring any sigil breaking ability, so we need to kill it before it can get this attack off. As you can see, we're hitting quite hard, so that's not going to be too much of an issue. The boss is immune to magic defense down, so with Matt, we only threw a fire breach, uh, but that's sufficient. Uh, Zack is just going to absolutely obliterate him here. And that is the end of the Galley B Akana fight. 66,000 points, a 24 second fight, and of course for our trans ability we're going to take the full score boost. Now, 
for those who are paying attention and who have run this before, you notice that I left a random encounter here until the end. My original plan here was to just use this random encounter to rebuild uh, Zack and Sephiroth's summons up to 50% and then just use a summon charge or whatever it's called to completely fill up their summons. However, something that I realized after this fight was already over was that we're pretty much at full summon gauge. Just to be safe, uh, I was recording and didn't want to keep re-recording. Uh, I decided to still use uh, summon charges on them anyway. You can see that for this random encounter, I'm just going to defensive stance using abilities to waste ATB and healing up or whatever. Uh, but just to be safe, again, I still use the summon charges. One fire cocktail on Zack, one on Sephiroth, summon charge for each of them. And then I also used an ether on Zack. I don't think this was necessary, but I did it. And we're going into the Shiva fight. Now to start this off, I'm going to swap to the mat, lower Shiva's magic defense. Shiva has now applied her magic attack up. I'm going to use Matt's Vanquishing X to completely remove that buff. Such a good limit break. Ugh, I, I love it. Um, and then, of course, Crimson Flare into Hellfire, and that is going to boost our fire damage and get rid of the adds here. I'm going to throw the Fire Breach from Matt, and then from there, we're just going to we're just gonna wail on Jiva. <laughs> and we're going to do quite a bit of damage. Diamond Dust is coming up, but honestly, with the magic defense up, and the ice resist up that we've gotten from the trance abilities. This really just doesn't hit my team that hard. I'm not all that concerned about it. I'm gonna heal up, but you might've noticed I didn't even use any wisdom jellies. Uh, and that's with my team's max HP being lowered quite a bit. When she uses frozen veil, she removes any magic defense down you have on her. So I use Matt to reapply that. Rhyme Breath normally applies fog to your whole team, which is a huge mechanic of the fight that they just let us completely bypass with a 100% fog resist <laughs> uh, trance ability. Heavenly Strike, single target attack. It's going to hit Matt for not enough for me to care. I'm not even going to heal Matt up afterward. Uh, she's going to be stunned because we've already depleted her Frozen Veil gauge. I'm going to use this opportunity to wail on her more with fire abilities. One thing I didn't notice until I was reviewing the recording here was that the magic defense down debuff for Matt fell off here. Maybe I should have reapplied it, but doesn't matter. Even with Frozen Veil back up and her lowering fire damage, we are just going to end the fight. All right, and 126,000 points after a one minute and 12 second fight brings us to the end of the run, 2.3 million score. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.